Proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Everyone here and everyone that's joining us on the live stream. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter. We're still in Eastertide. I expect those Easter eggs are a distant memory now. All the chocolate's been hoovered up, I expect. I can see by the size of your waistlines how much chocolate you've been eating. The readings tonight are very much about love, about the love of God. And that's a wonderful theme to dwell on. We are very often, we're always in the love of God, but we don't always appreciate it. We don't always appreciate all the blessings he showers on us day by day. We're usually very happy to be full of moans and groans, but let's look on the bright side of everything and uh, we will feel cheerful in ourselves. Let us call to mind our sins, those things which we've separated God with as I celebrate this Mass for the intentions of Patrick Mitchell Alderton. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come to us now in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and to make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We bless you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honour of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit for the readings. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. As Peter reached the house, Cornelius went out to meet him, knelt at his feet and prostrated himself. But Peter helped him up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man after all. Then Peter addressed them. The truth I have now come to realise, he said, is that God does not have favourites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all the listeners. Jewish believers who had accompanied Peter were all astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should be poured out on the pagans too, since they could hear them speaking strange languages and proclaiming the greatness of God. Peter himself then said, Could anyone refuse the water of baptism to these people now they have received the Holy Spirit just as much as we have? He then gave orders for them to be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, they begged him to stay on for some days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has shown his son John. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only Son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the gospel. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you, is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Today our scripture readings emphasise the importance of the outpouring of the spirit of love on the church. As we look forward to Pentecost, in two weeks' time, we expect the Holy Spirit to come down in baptism and confirmation and the Eucharist, of course. We hear of another outpouring of the Holy Spirit today on Cornelius and his household. How often, it's often known as the Gentile Pentecost. We also learn of distinctly Christian concept of love in John's letter. There was a story that a priest rang the house of one of his parishioners and a little girl picked up the phone. Can I speak to your mummy? asked the priest. No, whispered the girl. Why not? asked the priest. She's busy, replied the little girl. Can I speak to your daddy then? he asked. No, she whispered. He's busy also. Is there anyone else? asked the priest. A policeman, but he's busy too, whispered the little girl. Anyone else, asked the priest. There's a fireman here, but he's busy as well. What are all they being busy doing, inquired the priest in desperation. They're looking for me. Other faiths are about man's search for God. Christianity is different. It's about God's search for us. And we tend to hide from him. Although he offers such love, we are still nervous of accepting it unconditionally. We look for reasons to hold back, to doubt. We tiptoe about our lives and we, are, we whisper as if to whisper to avoid him. Even worse, when we do grudgingly accept him, we exclude others from him. Only Catholics can get into heaven, was once the watchword. The others are all heretics. Thankfully, since the 1960s, that has not been the stance of the Catholic Church. Yes, the Church, although not perfect, and what body of human beings could ever be perfect, it does contain the fullness of the Christian faith. 
we do believe in a common baptism of all Christian people. That means we have to rec recognize as Christian brothers and sisters many who are outside the Catholic Church. The Jews were the chosen people and those who were not of their race, their tribes, the Gentiles, were lost and irredeemably so. The promised Messiah, after all, was to come to the Jewish people, not to the outsiders. So when those early Christians who were Jewish had to confront the conversion of Gentiles, they thought that this was an impossibility. It caused a lot of infighting as to who was a real Christian and who wasn't. Today's first reading is the story of the Gentile Cornelius and his household on whom the Holy Spirit was outpoured. Peter had had that peculiar dream, you remember, about the sheet being lowered down from heaven with all sorts of forbidden and profane meat to eat. God, in the dream, had told Peter to eat it, as it he couldn't be unclean if he made it, and he mustn't call his creation profane. On waking, Peter was taken to Cornelius' house and found such faith that he saw that an analogy with his dream. No longer was God's love and forgiveness to be limited to one special set of people, but was for all mankind, Jew and Gentile alike. John tells us more about the nature of that God, a loving God, a God that searches us out and has no favourites, Jews or Anglicans or Baptists or even Catholics. To fulfil the wishes of God, we, his creation, have only to believe in his Son and to accept his love for ourselves, then to pass that love on wholeheartedly, unstintingly, to our fellow men and women. We cannot love one another without having that love from God in the first place. God's love for us, John says, was shown when he sent into the world his only son so that we could have life in him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God. So we need to try and understand God's love for us first. Love is a powerful force, the opposite of evil. Here we understand why, because John goes to the heart of it. Love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. What a thought. Everyone who loves knows God. And John goes on, anyone who fails to love can never have known God. And here's the crunch, because God is love. Now we know why love is so powerful. It is God himself. Gone is the picture of the old man with the long white beard sitting on a cloud. Children's liturgy stuff, perhaps. No, this is a more grown-up concept of God. A mysterious force of love itself. A personal relationship of love. A love worth dying for. A love so strong that it will carry us over between this life and into the next. A love that defies rational explanation. Just as much as the love that people feel for one another when we say they are in love. To have experienced that ecstatic love is to help have felt something of the presence of God amongst us. Jesus asks us to remain in that love. The love that he gives us through the Spirit he has received from the Father. To do this, it is not just to bathe in some luxurious warm feeling but to show love to others. To keep his commandments. If necessary, to show a sacrificial love. To die for another in love is the ultimate sacrifice. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. These friends are not just those who we call friends in real life, but our enemies as well and those for whom we feel nothing. We must make no distinction. We shouldn't be hiding from him, like the little girl. We should be in the open for him, welcoming him 
And taking that difficult road of love, even that sacrificial road of love, to really know love is, after all, to know God. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, consubstantial with the Father who once all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his life will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the forward for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, 
He brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Edward, Saint Pius X, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Those who are in family groups can exchange the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you be seated for a moment, please? As usual, a thank you to our stewards for what they're about to do and what they've already done. Um, to our IT team, especially, uh, I think it's Andy tonight on the uh, live stream, putting up all the, uh, the subtitles and in, queuing in the music. Um, also for our readers who've recorded their readings in advance, remotely, and the musicians for their ministries at this Mass. It's all very much appreciated. Hopefully you've received a copy of the parish email that goes out every Friday. Please do read it. It has, this one has a message from Father Thomas and details of the upcoming parish day. We can have a big celebration to hopefully when all the restrictions are lifted and that's on July the 11th, so keep that in your diary. And a reminder that at 6.30 tomorrow evening we have evening prayer and adoration. We will of course be lighting a candle for Father Thomas's intentions and if there are any other intentions you would like added please email them to us, office at cpg.church. Thank you for the uh, children, youth and families team. There is a family liturgy available via the parish website. Not easy to find creative ways to present the liturgy of the word every week, so please do encourage your children and grandchildren to log on and participate in that. I think that's enough for me for one evening. Uh, Great to see you all here, and especially to have the families, even if they're not as silent as they ought to be. They'll learn one day. <laughs> I, think, I think I won, I'm not sure. <laughs> Only just, yeah. Lovely to have you all together anyway. Let us stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.